Welcome to your total joint class, and thanks for choosing Banner Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. This class will help you feel informed, organized, and well-prepared for your upcoming joint replacement surgery. You'll learn how to get ready for your procedure, what to expect during your hospital stay, and how to reduce the risk of any complications. You'll also get some important tips to make sure your transition from the hospital to recovering at home is as smooth as possible. Each part of this video corresponds with sections in the printed care and recovery guide. If you have yours, follow along during class and take notes as needed. If you don't have a care and recovery guide, ask your nurse navigator. They'll get a digital copy sent right over to you. In this class, we'll cover understanding the anatomy of your joint and why surgery is required, what to expect and how to prepare, helpful checklists to get you ready and what you need and how to use it, step-by-step -step instructions on what will happen on surgery day, what to expect once you're back at home, and commonly asked questions and answers. Between the segments, we'll give you natural places to pause this video if you need to take a break for any reason. Let's begin. By now, you've probably learned a lot about your joint and why your doctor has recommended surgery. Still, take some time to review section one of your care and recovery guide for information about how your joint works, what parts of the joint will be replaced during surgery, and realistic expectations from the procedure. If you have additional questions about the surgery or implant, please talk with your orthopedic surgeon. All joint replacement surgeries need some preparations in order to achieve the best possible outcomes. Watching this video helps ensure you and anyone assisting with your care are prepared for your surgery and recovery. We're going to review the important steps you should take prior to surgery to help you best prepare. Now that you and your orthopedic surgeon have agreed that joint replacement surgery is right for you, here's what to expect. Your surgeon's office will schedule the date of surgery. Many surgeons don't set the time until a day or two before surgery. This is normal. A pre-admission nurse will contact you to perform a pre-operative assessment. For this assessment, it is helpful to have a list of the medications that you take, including prescriptions, over-the-counter medications, vitamins, and supplements. Include the dosage and how often you take them. Also, a member from the hospital's patient access services team will contact you to review your financial responsibility to the hospital. Follow along in section two of your care and recovery guide. To help you heal effectively, good nutrition and healthy lifestyle habits are extremely important before and after surgery. The outcomes of surgery are directly related to nutrition status prior to and after surgery. Here's what you can do to get ready. It's very important to eat a well-balanced diet before surgery, including fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and protein. Vitamins, minerals, and protein are vital to the healing process. Your care and recovery guide has a checklist in section three to help you choose nutritious foods for meal planning. A healthier diet is important, but if you are overweight, losing some weight may be required. There's a higher risk for complications for patients with an elevated body mass index, or BMI. If you are overweight, be sure to discuss this with your doctor. If you smoke, we encourage you to quit smoking prior to surgery and refrain from smoking during your recovery. Why? Well, nicotine constricts blood vessels to about 25% of their normal size, and your blood vessels carry nutrients, minerals, and oxygen to the bones. So when you smoke, fewer of those important nutrients get to your bones, which delays healing, sometimes up to eight weeks more than usual. Also, if you smoke, you are three times more likely to get an infection, six times more likely to develop breathing problems after surgery, and eight times more likely to require another operation. There is also increased risk of complications with anesthesia. If you need resources to help you quit, please contact your primary care provider. All patients require preoperative clearances. This usually involves some tests such as blood work, an EKG, chest x-ray, or a CT scan. Your doctor may recommend other clearances such as a dental evaluation or urinary evaluation. If you see a specialist, such as a cardiologist, you may also be instructed to obtain additional approval for surgery from those specialists as well. Please make sure these are completed as soon as possible because any delays can cause your surgery to be canceled or rescheduled. Your surgeon may also recommend prehab. Prehab is done through exercises before surgery. It can help speed up your recovery, reduce fatigue and muscle soreness, and strengthen the muscles around your joint. Make sure you talk to your surgeon for the right exercises for you prior to surgery. It's also helpful to talk to your doctors about your pain management plan before the surgery. 
One of the most important things to do before surgery is choose your care helper. This can be a family member, friend, neighbor, or you can have multiple helpers. Your care helper will need to drive you to and from the hospital and drive you to any appointments after surgery, including outpatient physical therapy. Outpatient physical therapy is usually two to three times a week, so make arrangements well before surgery so you have plenty of time to plan. It is also helpful for them to assist you with getting your assistive equipment, preparing your home for safe and easy movement, help with housekeeping and other tasks like preparing meals, laundry, grocery shopping, gathering supplies, or assist with yard work, pet care, and retrieving your mail. They will also provide emotional, physical, and logistical support. We have a care and recovery guide made just for your care helper too, so they know how they can best support you. Ask your nurse navigator for this if you don't have one. And if you don't have a care helper, please let your nurse navigator know so they can assist in planning for a safe discharge. You may need some helpful items at your home to keep you safe and comfortable. Getting them in advance of your surgery will ensure you have time to practice using them. There will be a demonstration on how to use this equipment later in this video, but here are some of the items you may need. For hip and knee surgeries, a front-wheeled walker is required. A shower chair or bench and elevated toilet seat is also recommended. For hip and knee surgeries, we recommend a hip kit, which includes tools like a sock aid, a long-handled sponge, a reacher, and a long-handled shoehorn. Shoulder patients may also benefit from some of the tools in the hip kit. All surgical patients will require ice packs and wedges or firm pillows for elevation after surgery. You'll see this information detailed in your care and recovery guide for easy reference. All right, now let's help you get organized. Section three of your care and recovery guide has several checklists to help you stay organized. As you complete steps from the lists, check them off. The first page of this section has your personal appointment tracker. There are a lot of appointments associated with having joint replacement surgery. You can use this tool to enter your appointments in your personal calendar or planner. It's very important to attend all of your appointments. If a situation arises where you cannot make an appointment, please call and reschedule. Being ready for surgery starts well before your scheduled day. In the weeks leading up to your surgery, be sure to complete your before surgery checklist in your care and recovery guidebook. Be sure to Determine your health insurance coverage. Notify your surgeon's office if there are any changes to your plan. Schedule all your preoperative clearance appointments as soon as possible. Identify your care helper. Obtain assistive equipment and practice using it prior to surgery. Notify your primary care provider and orthopedic surgeon if you develop a cold, fever, or other infection prior to surgery. We do not want to do surgery when you have any active infections so it is always best to notify your surgeon for any concerning symptoms. And shower with antibacterial soap. We will review the showering instructions in more detail in just a few minutes. And make sure you don't take any blood thinning medications before your surgery, take any weight loss medications or herbal supplements 14 days before surgery, or shave from the neck down for one week prior to surgery. Check your equipment checklist in your guidebook and make sure to have these items ready at home before your surgery day and practice using them. We'll demonstrate the correct usage for some of the most commonly used items later in this video. A few adjustments in the home will help keep you safe and stumble free in the weeks following surgery. Use this checklist in your care guide to ensure your home is safe and ready for you when you return from the hospital with tips like, rearrange furniture so you can walk safely, Practice walking around with your walker and move any furniture or items that are in your pathway. Remove any throw rugs, area rugs, or anything else you could potentially trip over. Be aware of any uneven surface and use caution when crossing them to prevent falls. Securely fasten electrical cords around the perimeter of rooms. Make sure your home is well lit so you can always see where you're going. If you have stairs, consider making arrangements to avoid stairs initially after surgery. Right before surgery, clean your home, wash your bed linens, clothing, and towels. Prepare meals, gather supplies, and groceries. Arrange for someone to help care for your pet if necessary. This grocery shopping checklist can help you choose nutrient-rich foods to help promote healing. Foods high in vitamins, minerals, and proteins are essential after surgery. Some patients may have a decreased appetite after surgery, but this is when your nutrition needs are the highest. If you do not feel like eating, consider getting nutritional supplements such as protein shakes or smoothies. Sometimes it can be easier to drink something than to eat a meal. When you are ready to prepare your hospital bag, use the list in your guide to help you pack. 
gather items you don't have at home a week or two ahead. Have your hospital bag packed and ready to go the night before surgery. Before surgery, it is important to clean your skin with an antibacterial soap, such as chlorhexidine gluconate or CHG. This helps reduce your risk of infection. You will begin using an antibacterial soap once a day, starting four days before surgery and on the morning of surgery for a total of five uses. Use this soap to wash your body from your neck to your toes. Be sure to get everywhere you can reach. Ask for help if needed. Do not use this soap on your face, hair, or genital areas. You can use your regular soap and shampoo for those areas. If your skin has a reaction, stop using immediately and notify your surgeon's office. Please use a clean washcloth and towel for each shower. And please remember, no shaving from the neck down. On the day of surgery, after your last shower, do not put anything else on your skin or in your hair. This includes lotions, ointments, makeup, nail polish, perfume or cologne, deodorant, or hairpins. By the day before surgery, you should have been informed of the arrival time for your surgery. You'll be instructed to not have anything to eat or drink after midnight or for eight hours before surgery. Replace your bed linens with freshly washed sheets and pillowcases. Double check your packed hospital bag. Don't forget to avoid eating or drinking within your instructed time frame. Do not smoke after midnight. Do not bring any jewelry, cash, or valuables to the hospital, and avoid bringing your own medication to the hospital unless you were specifically told to do so. Before you head to the hospital with your care helper, use your day of surgery checklist in section three of your care and recovery guide to make sure you have taken care of all of your important surgery day to do's. Earlier in the video, we asked that you review your assistive equipment checklist. Now we'll demonstrate the correct way to use some of the most commonly used items, including the sling and the walker, and to know how to safely climb a stair threshold or get in and out of a car. Practice these before your surgery. For more in-depth demonstrations of the assistive equipment, talk with your nurse navigator or care team. Adjusting the walker to the correct height. After hip or knee replacement surgeries, we recommend you use a front-wheeled walker and not a four-wheeled walker. To tell if your walker is the correct height, step inside your walker, stand up straight with your arms resting at your sides. The walker height should be level with the bend in your wrist. Then place your hands on the grips and relax your shoulders. Your elbows should bend at a comfortable angle of about 20 degrees. To adjust the height of your walker, use the push buttons on the legs to raise or lower as needed. Now we'll show you how to safely go up and down a curb or the threshold step into your home. Walk straight up to the step and place all four legs of the walker on the step. Push straight down on the walker when stepping up with your non-surgical leg. Then step up with the surgical leg. If someone is with you, they should stand on the lower step for safety. When going down a step, walk up to the edge of the step, put all four legs of the walker on the ground below. Step down with your surgical leg, followed by your non-surgical leg. If someone is with you, they should stand on the lower step for safety. When getting into a car, make sure the car you are getting into is parked on a level surface. Make sure the passenger seat is moved as far back as possible and is slightly reclined. Back up to the car until you feel the back of your legs touching the car. Reach your hands back for the seat or door frame, slide your surgical leg out in front of you, and lower yourself onto the edge of the seat. Slide your bottom back toward the middle of the seat by pushing on your seat with your hands and using your non-surgical leg to assist. Pivot yourself to a front-facing position, bending your surgical leg as needed to get into the car. To get out of the car, keep your surgical leg straight and slowly pivot your bottom around so your legs are out of the car and facing forward. Using your hands on the seat and the side of the car, move your bottom to the edge of the seat and stand up. After a shoulder surgery, it's important to have a properly adjusted sling. If you have not yet received a sling from your surgeon's office, you will receive it at the hospital after surgery. If you have received a sling, please practice the following steps. When a sling is worn correctly, your arm should feel comfortable and fully supported. Your elbow should be at 90 degrees when positioned in the back corner of the sling. Your wrist should be supported and your fingers free to move. You should never feel that you need to shrug your shoulder to hold your arm up. The arm should be in a neutral position and not too far in front of the body. This is the optimal position for the shoulder to heal. Straps can be tightened or loosened so the arm stays in the correct position. Now we will cover what to expect on the day of your surgery. Typically, you are told to arrive at the hospital about two hours before your surgery time. You will check in as instructed, move to the preoperative area. 
In pre-op, we will help you prepare for surgery. You will be asked many questions to confirm your health information. To help prevent infection, you will be given some antibacterial wipes to cleanse your skin once more and an iodine-based antiseptic swab to cleanse your nostrils. You will change into a hospital gown and an IV will be inserted into your arm. You will then meet with your surgeon and anesthesia team. From pre-op, you will go into the operating room. Your surgeon can give you an estimate of how long your specific procedure should take. After surgery, you will go to the recovery room, also known as PACU. In PACU, you will be closely monitored as you wake up from the anesthesia. The nursing staff will help you stay comfortable and family or friends will be notified of your progress. If your surgeon discussed discharging home on the same day of surgery with you, you may discharge home from the PACU. The nurses will assist you with getting dressed, walking, and preparing for your discharge home. If your surgeon discussed staying overnight in the hospital, you'll be transferred to your room on the nursing floor. Your orthopedic surgeon and care team will help you determine when it will be safest and most appropriate to discharge you. Before you go home, we want to make sure your pain is controlled with oral medications, you are able to eat and drink, you can urinate without difficulty, can get in and out of bed with minimal help, and are able to walk safely with your walker. Proper pain management and care is important in your early recovery. Your pain control starts prior to surgery. Be sure to have discussions with your anesthesiologist and surgeon about your plan. Every patient experiences pain differently and your care team will work with you to create an individual pain plan. It is important to set realistic expectations. The goal immediately after surgery is to keep your pain at a comfortable, tolerable level where you can still perform daily activities. Nerve blocks are an effective form of pain control that will cause your surgical limb to feel numb for up to 24 hours. Because of this, it's critical to have assistance and use caution when walking. When the nerve block wears off, the first signs of sensation returning to the limb is a tingling feeling. To ensure a comfortable transition, take your oral pain medication as soon as you feel the nerve block wearing off. It's important to take your medication before you have severe pain so that it has time to start working. Swelling will also cause pain. Use ice packs and elevation to keep the swelling down. Although you'll probably want to take it easy at first, early activity and mobilization is a key part in your recovery. It is important to start walking as soon as possible after surgery and take several short walks every day. Walking will offset the effects of anesthesia. It reduces your risk for blood clots and pneumonia, prevents stiffness and soreness, builds muscles and improves overall health. You may feel weak, so have assistance and use your walker until your therapist or surgeon says you no longer need it. You will have a dressing over your incision. Follow your surgeon's instructions for incision care. Knee surgery patients may have a bulky dressing. Some patients may have a drain at the incision that will be removed in 24 to 48 hours. Compression stockings will be worn on both legs to help prevent blood clots and decrease swelling. If your surgeon orders compression stockings, they will be applied in pre-op. The risk of pneumonia increases with any surgery. It is important to get out of bed and increase your activity. Eat all your meals sitting up in a chair. Brush your teeth at least twice a day. Ask if you are eligible for the pneumonia vaccine. You will receive an incentive spirometer or breathing tool when you are in the hospital and be shown how to use it. Take this home with you and continue to use it during your recovery. Now we will review how to manage your care to promote healing at home. Managing your pain safely is a very important topic. Please pay close attention to the remainder of this segment. You will need multiple interventions to assist in controlling your pain. We recommend you use different medications, both prescription and over-the-counter, along with non-medication techniques like ice and elevation to control your pain. This helps provide the maximum pain relief with the least amount of narcotic medications. When you are taking narcotic medications, do not drive or make important decisions. Do not drink alcohol. It is best to eat something before taking them. Keep track of the amount and last time you took the medication. They should only be used for the first few days and then significantly less after that. To wean off your medication, start increasing the length of time between doses until you are no longer taking them. Stay hydrated. Drink eight to 10 glasses of water to avoid dehydration, which can lead to low blood pressure, lightheadedness, dizziness, and constipation. Keep your pills in a safe place so others don't have access to them. Over-the-counter medication can provide additional pain relief. Please refer to your care guide to see over-the-counter options. Ask your primary care physician or surgeon if there are any contradictions or reasons why you should not take these medications. Medication-free interventions can be very effective in managing your pain. Use ice packs for the first couple weeks after surgery. 
Ice provides comfort, decreases swelling, and provides pain control. Be sure to ice the entire joint, not just the incision. Elevation is essential to decrease swelling. If you are having hip or knee surgery, keep your legs straight and use pillows or wedges to elevate. When you use pillows under your leg, avoid putting a pillow directly behind the bend of your knee. You have some large blood vessels behind your knee. Putting a pillow there can restrict the blood flow. For shoulder surgeries, sit upright and elevate your hand, wrist, and forearm. Walking is another great way to help with your pain. It can help reduce swelling, build muscle strength, and prevent stiffness and soreness. Aromatherapy can alter the brain's perception of pain and help improve mood. Distraction uses activities such as listening to music, watching TV, or playing games to divert your attention from any pain. Guided imagery, relaxation techniques, or meditation can help reduce stress levels and ease anxiety. Individual prayer from your spiritual or religious affiliation can also give comfort and reduce anxiety. Constipation is a common side effect when taking narcotic pain medication, and many experience constipation after a joint replacement surgery. It's important to avoid becoming constipated. Please pay close attention to these recommendations. Signs and symptoms of constipation include hard, small stools that are difficult to pass, fewer number of bowel movements, gas, abdominal cramping, bloating, and nausea. To prevent constipation, drink eight to 10 glasses of water each day. Add high fiber foods like fresh fruits and vegetables and dried fruits to your diet. Refrain from caffeine and alcohol, stay active and walk as much as possible, and take over the counter stool softeners. Go when you feel the urge and decrease your pain medication as much as you can as you are able. If you have not had a bowel movement in two days, you may need a laxative or suppository in addition to your stool softener. Your surgeon or pharmacist can help make a recommendation. Your commitment to your therapy program will help get you back into your routines more quickly. If your surgeon recommends physical therapy following your procedure, be sure to schedule your first appointment day and time prior to surgery. Follow all recommendations and attend all your scheduled appointments. Once you have achieved all your recommended rehab goals, you need to continue with a regular exercise program to maintain your overall fitness and to help the health of the muscles around your joint. With permission from both your orthopedic surgeon and primary care provider, you should exercise three to four times a week for 20 to 30 minutes at a time. After orthopedic surgery, patients are at an increased risk of developing blood clots or deep vein thrombosis. A complication of a blood clot is a pulmonary embolism, when a piece of the clot breaks off and travels to your lungs. Your orthopedic surgeon may recommend a variety of methods to decrease your risk of forming a blood clot once you are home. Wear your compression stockings as instructed. Make sure you wear non-skid socks or shoes over the stockings as they can be slippery. Walk often and when you are in a chair or laying down, pump your ankles like you are pressing up and down on a gas pedal of a car. This helps with the blood flow to prevent a clot from forming. If your surgeon prescribed a blood thinning medication, take it as prescribed. Although developing a blood clot or pulmonary embolism is rare, please be aware of symptoms and notify your surgeon or primary care provider immediately. Symptoms include increased swelling, warmth or tenderness of limbs, shortness of breath, increased heart rate, palpitations, or chest pain. Infections after joint replacement surgeries are also rare. However, you should continue to take precautions to avoid infections after you are discharged. Keep pets, kids, and hazards away from your incision area. Wash your hands often to reduce germs. Follow your surgeon's instructions for incision care and when it is okay to shower. Continue drinking plenty of fluids and eating a balanced diet high in protein and fiber. Keep your home environment clean. Symptoms of infection include increased redness, drainage or swelling at the surgical incision, increased warmth or tenderness at or around the surgical incision, persistent fever higher than 101.5 degrees, chills or shaking. If you develop any of these symptoms, please contact your surgeon's office right away. After total joint surgery, antibiotics may be required before any invasive procedures such as dental cleaning, oral surgery, or some other procedures. After surgery, your incision will be covered by a dressing to protect it. Your orthopedic surgeon will determine the most appropriate type of dressing to use. Your care team will teach you how to take care of your dressing and incision at home. Ask your orthopedic surgeon when you can take your dressing off and when you can shower. Your surgeon will check on the healing progress of your surgical incisions at your post-operative appointments. Now let's talk about your recovery action plan and cover some frequently asked questions. In your care and recovery guide, the action plan is an important reference to help you manage your care at home. The first section describes symptoms that are normal after surgery. Follow the daily action plan in the green box. 
The second section describes symptoms for which you will need to notify your surgeon's office for further instructions. The third section describes medical emergencies for which you should call 911 or go to the emergency room. You should try to avoid the emergency room unless it is truly an emergency. But if you do go to the emergency room or get admitted to the hospital during your recovery, please inform your orthopedic surgeon's office so they can follow up on your care. There are doctors and nurses on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so they can guide you to appropriate follow-up. All patients should follow up with their orthopedic surgeon about two weeks after surgery, as well as their primary care physician shortly after surgery. Be sure to keep a copy of your recovery action plan on your refrigerator or where it is easily visible in your home. And that's it. You now have the important information to keep you healthy before, during, and after your upcoming surgery. Please refer back to this video or to your printed care and recovery guide if you need a refresher on anything that was covered. Be aware, you will receive many phone calls from the hospital and physician offices as your surgery nears. Please return all calls in a timely manner. We are eager to make this process as simple as possible for you. So please contact your nurse navigator with any questions. Thank you for choosing Banner Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for your upcoming orthopedic surgery. We're ready to help you keep moving forward.